a February interest rate rise is looking less and less likely, with many economists now suggesting the next move will be a rate cut later this year. Political reporter Joel Philp joins us. So, Joel, yesterday's inflation numbers could be good news for mortgage holders. Yeah, that's right, Simon. Look, the Treasurer is warning not to get too carried away with these figures we seen released yesterday. They're technically monthly figures, which don't hold as much weight as quarterly figures in terms of how much they fluctuate. Well, what we did see is a surprise to the downside of annual inflation to the month of November, coming in at 4.3%. Economists had predicted it to be slightly higher, 4.4%, and it compares to the rate uh, it, one month earlier, annual inflation to the month of October being 4.9%. So quite a substantial little slide down there. And what we're now seeing is money markets predicting, fully pricing in a rate cut as soon as August 2024. We've got a graphic you can pull up there to see what the ASX rate tracker indicates will happen into the future. We're seeing one fully priced in back to 4.1% uh, from where it stands out, 4.35 by August 2024. January 2025, 20, all but priced in a second cut. And then you can see where it heads to June 2025. So it's quite far away now, but almost a third cut priced in as well, a little bit further to go there. But that might give mortgage holders some indication about what money markets are predicting to occur in the future. The Prime Minister this morning was claiming credit for this inflation downturn. In yesterday's release by the ABS uh, on the inflation figures, they singled out government policy whether it was the energy price relief plan, whether it be fee-free TAFE or other measures uh, which have made a difference and which is why uh, it is a contributing factor to that lower than expected figure that we saw in the inflation figures yesterday. The government hopes to next pull regulatory levers to try to bring down inflation in the future, including considering making a grocery and food code of conduct mandatory. There is an investigation going on into the big supermarkets being led by former Labor Minister Craig Emerson and this idea of a mandatory code of conduct that could help support farmers and at the same time perhaps bring down prices at the uh, checkout is being welcomed. It's also good that the government and Craig Emerson doing the review are seriously considering making it compulsory. In the past, it was just tokenistic. It was not a Dinkum code of conduct because it depended on the big retailers agreeing to everything. That was the former head of the ACCC, Alan Fells, there weighing in. Now, of course, we've got later this year the May budget, which is likely to be the crucial key budget before the next federal election in probably the following year after that. So this will be an important one for Australians wondering if there's going to be cost of living relief. Simon? Yeah, no doubt, Joel. We'll wait and see on that election timing. I dare say it won't be this year, given the crisis, but uh, it's always a guessing game, isn't it? Joel Philp, live there in Canberra for us. Thanks so much.